What's good everyone? Uh, this is a very impromptu video, but we have some huge breaking news, so I'm gonna get straight into it. Uh, Jojo Lands has a date of confirmation. This is huge. Like, this is really, really huge, because I was personally expecting Jojo Lands, which is still the tentative title for Part 9, to be releasing around the spring. But actually, it seems to be releasing February 17th, which has me absolutely through the moon, because I am super, super excited to do some Part 9 stuff for the channel. I want to do a whole read-through of the part, so we can build a whole huge community around it, and I am, I'm just stoked. I want to talk a bit about the art itself for the promo because i think it's pretty interesting not gonna lie so the promo is divided between a white and a red which sort of gives me the idea of duality which was obviously a big theme in jujolian with the idea of josuke being two people now if they really push on this duality angle that would be pretty cool lots of people are theorizing that the protagonists of the part are going to be twins based off of giorno and jolene but of this alternate universe which would be pretty cool in my opinion. I personally believe it's going to be a Shizuka Joestar type of scenario since we know the descendant will be from the Joseph that we met at the end of Jojolian. So there's a lot here that I'm just super super excited about. But mostly I just wanted to make a super quick video because literally Jojo Lands is almost here guys. It's only two months away almost to the date. It's currently December 14th when I'm recording which is literally seconds after finding out about the news. But yeah. I would love to know what you guys are expecting for Jojo Lands. I am literally over the moon with excitement. And personally, like I said, I'm backing on the Shizuka thing because that'd be pretty awesome. And we get another cool female Joe star, especially after Stone Ocean getting an anime. That'd be pretty cool because a lot of people have finally realized Jolene is literally the best. Uh, not my personal favorite, but she's awesome. There are also a lot of people who think the idea of Josuke and Yasuo are still integral to the story which would be amazing in my opinion as well i think josuke could have a lot more interesting character development especially now that he is sort of more affirmative in who he is yasuo coming back would be the greatest thing ever i love yasuo she's absolutely amazing and if josuke comes back we could get more insight onto what the higashikata family is up to maybe even what jobin's up to maybe even what everyone else is up to i'm saying what jobin's up to because i'm coping still i'm really really coping but anyway just some little minor expectations for the part i think this could be like a stardust crusaders-esque thing and if josuke and yasuo are in it and there is some sort of twin angle or the angle with shizuka it could be really cool so we get a whole big squad you know and we have it more concretely in a group rather than jajolian which was in a group for a bit you know we had mamazuku josuke and yasuo for some parts of it but it didn't really feel like as much of a group narrative as basically every other jojo part so i'm excited to see what happens here absolutely for sure there's still the idea that they're heading to new guinea which is where the Rokakaka is from, if this is continuing with the Jojolian plotline, which would be pretty cool in my opinion, don't get me wrong. And I don't really know where exactly it would tie in though. Would it lead the rock humans to be a further protagon protagonist, further antagonist to the story? I don't know, that could be pretty cool. I still feel like there's a lot that is very unexplored with them, similar to how the pillar men were treated in part two and then not really emphasized as much. And with Joseph being seen at the end of part eight, it could be a really, really strong pillar man connection since, you know, the rock humans and the pillar men are both men in rocks, essentially. So with that, I think there could be some really cool connections to battle tendency, which is one of my favorite parts. So my expectations for that are really high as well. Now, it is really, really possible that this could be the last piece of manga that Araki ever puts out and the possible end of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because He's almost 70 years old like this dude has been a monster making consistently great stories ever since his 20s over and over and over again you could just see some of them right up there but i really really hope that this is able to encompass everything he wants to get out of it. obviously steel ball run was something he really wanted to make which is why he decided to change up the way he tells a story especially by switching to a monthly way of publication he's able to draw it out for longer get everything he wants to out and i know a lot of people personally who are kind of conflicted with jajolian but a lot of people do really really enjoy the part 
and with part 9 possibly being the last one of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, being the third end of a trilogy, the first part being the Stone Mask trilogy, the second part being the Stand Arrow trilogy, and this being the, I guess, Alternate Universe trilogy. We don't really have a through line yet except Spin, but if this is truly the end of, I guess, the Spin trilogy, uh, I cannot wait to see what happens. If we get any more ties to Part 7 and Part 8, I'll be absolutely ecstatic, making everything feel like a real fluid journey, sort of like what Part 6 did, especially from Parts 1 to 6, making it all feel like a long, epic journey we've all been a part of. And seeing that this new trilogy has basically been almost 20 years at this point, maybe it'll be 25 by the end of Jojo Lands, it'll be crazy to see. So personally, I'm insanely excited to see where this part can go, not only for the actual story and characters we're going to meet, but to see how Araki might finish it all off with a bang. And hopefully not like a bang, like everything goes crazy, uh, which would be cool for a final fight, but you get what I mean. A uh, sort of grand finale for the series, if this is actually the last part of JoJo. Something I personally think would be really, really cool is if Araki was able to reference his previous works. Like many JoJo historians might know, who people who do the deep deep dives into the fandom or maybe you've played all-star battle and you've seen characters like bow or gorgeous irene you might know like any little cues to that really try to make everything in his manga career sort of come full circle here that'd be pretty awesome and another thing i think would be really cool is to possibly have some sort of rohan the spoke rohan kishibe-esque arcs that happen in the plot as well I know that the Rohan stuff is usually a bit either really heady or really intense with no story structure since they're all one shots, but I personally think having some more stuff like that, especially the horror-esque ones for Jojo Lands would be pretty cool. And the idea of it being called Jojo Lands still distinguishes the idea of it being a world traveling journey, similar to Stardust Crusaders, Mento Areo, um, every Jojo part that's sort of a journey type of thing. Like I said, Battle Tendency earlier, they travel all over Europe in that one, so more hints to that maybe, that would be pretty awesome. But I think if it is a Jojo Lands-esque scenario, this would allow for more one-shot-esque writing, which Araki I personally think has been excelling at, especially with Rohan stuff as of late. My favorite by far being The Run, which was super, super crazy. I just love the absolute insanity of everything going on in such a mundane setting, which Araki I think does super super well you know turning the normal into the bizarre which would be a cool way to end off the bizarre series as a whole if this does happen to be the case so i just know what you guys think down below and what do you think jojo lands is going to be based on thematically obviously i gave a super little teensy weensy you know assumption but i think a duality theme would be pretty cool another thing about the duality theme is that it doesn't need to necessarily just apply to our hero and villain which Araki does really, really well in basically every part, in my opinion. My favorite, personally, being Josuke and Kira, how they oppose each other on so many fundamental levels. Just, ugh. I'm not going to get into that, obviously. But if there is a twin protagonist role, the duality could be seen between the ways they interact with villains, the world. I don't know. It could be really interesting to see two Joe stars in the same part that are written directly meant to either oppose each other, be foils to one another. I don't know. There's a lot of directions I think he could take this, and I could understand why this theory is seen as a, a really cool one. And with Josuke being, you know, two people in one, being a Joestar with two people in one, and then having two Joestars, that could be really interesting in my opinion. And I'm excited to see if this theory turns out to be true. With that, hopefully you all enjoyed, and <laughs> let's get hype. Literally two months away. Can't even believe it.